Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 20. The Constitution of a Nation by God. And God spake all these words. So the first giving of the Ten Commandments is God speaking orally. We're going to see some interesting facts here. I am the Lord thy God. No other. Which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt. That's me. The one that had all the powers. All the signs. All the wonders. Everything that was done. Life. Weather. Chemicals. I am that God. Out of the house of bondage. is where you guys were. Number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Oh, well, they're going to blow that one. But we blow that one. We've got things that are before God. The first commandment is God first all the time. That moment, 3 o'clock in the morning, you get that urge to use the bathroom. Do you praise God waking up or you run off to the bathroom? And get back to sleep, go to sleep, and you didn't say anything or thank God for anything. That's a sin. And we can go more and more on that. Oh, I can do the first commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. That's a small G-O-D-S. Number two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. This one is removed when you get a copy of the Roman Catholic Ten Commandments. Notice this one does not show up. You say, well, how do they do that? They take commandment number two and they break it into two. I know I'm, I grew up Roman Catholic. Because... You cannot have the Bible say against their aids to worship and have God say, Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not have statues, graven image. Those statues are made. They are fashioned of any likeness, of anything that is in heaven above. No angels. No representation of Jesus Christ himself. No seraphims. No God's throne. Or that is in the earth. Beneath. Man. Eagles. Animals. So as a Christian nation, we've got the bald eagle as a symbol of a, You are defying the Ten Commandments. Number two. You are defined, number one, no other gods before me. Why are you allowing religions to come into our country if you're a Christian nation to worship G-O-D-S? And your constitution said they are allowed to worship the God of their choice. Violation of the Ten Commandments, you're no longer a Christian nation. 
and that is in the water under the earth. You know, no platypuses, no mermaids, no whales, no nothing. As far as the heavens, as far as the ground, as far as the waters, you are not to make any graven image. Let's go over the further clause. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Now you see in the tabernacle, it's going to be, Solomon's going to make engravings of cherubims and palm trees. And there are two cherubims upon the ark, the mercy seat. But they're not worshipped. Well, I got little kind of doobie dubbies of wallpaper. I don't bow down before it. But that moment when you make Mary on the half shell, you were cleaning her armpits to get into heaven. Listen, I know these things. I grew up in that religion. You got time out from purgatory if you clean Mary on the half show in your front yard. Because she's unable to clean herself. Or you, you know, I think, I know my wife and my daughter are saying, we'll be preaching in the streets, we'll be somewhere in the street. They'll come up and show us a cross, yeah. or pull something out on a necklace, or pull something out of the wallet. Tattoo. They bow down to worship. Now let's let's get to the Christmas tree with this one real quick. In order to grab those gifts, you got to get down your knees. Okay. Nor serve them. Clean them. Make sure they're happy. Make sure you bring offerings to them. If it falls off the dashboard of your car, you you know you pull over and pick them up and put them back on there before he ends up in the junkyard. St. Christopher, that's the funniest one at the time. I, I that was around the time I got saved. But they gave up on him because they found a statue in the junkyard too, with all cars that had been in an accident, so he failed. Aids to worship is a sin. Well, we're going to see that in a minute. I don't know how far we're going to get today. And let me make a little note here. My eyes are blurry from allergy so I can just barely see thou shalt not bow thyself down to them nor serve them so when you say aids to worship you're already omitting guilt mm -hmm. for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God how do you like that here's a holy jealousy God said listen you got somebody else important than me I'm jealous there was an offering in the law we'll get to Lord willing later for a husband, if he thinks his wife has stepped down on him, he can bring that offering of jealousy and bring his wife before. Jealousy means I love you. And I think you're giving too much time to somebody else. not necessarily a sin. Are you going to charge God with sin? I'm jealous, God. And when you worship something other than God, God gets angry with jealousy. How do you like that one? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers... Of all words you can use there, God. Now watch this one. Upon the children. Isn't there a church that's been having a problem with the fathers onto the children? Is that, if that's not perfectly worded right there. But the fathers are in charge of the family. And Jeremiah will run a problem with the women of the family. We're going, to we're going to give incense and everything to the queen of heaven. We don't care what the husband said. The husband won't stand up and take charge of the family. And the husband will be charged, Ahab, as your wife has ordered the death of Naboth. Unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Now you say, well, isn't there somewhere in the Bible that says the father shall not be charged with the son, and the son shall not be charged with the father. That's correct. You know how the dominance the Catholic Church has is upon generations, upon the great-grandpas, the, grand, the great-grandpas, and the grandpas, and then the child, and then the grandchild, and the great-grandchildren? That stuff is passed on in the Catholic Church. And they hold you to it. Because if you can't be buried in the family Catholic cemetery, and, you know, and, and Grandpa Jones, if you don't burn the can't they, they got the family involved. The fathers are teaching the sons to raise up in that religion is what it's saying. Now, we got an issue here with commandment number two. Look, we got five verses. So let's look at 19 verse 8 again. 
And all the people answered together and said, uh, said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Okay? And then Moses took the word back to God and said, Hey, we, we will do everything that you tell us to do. Kindly go to Exodus 32, verse 1. Shall we? I want to hear God speak to me. He is speaking. Will that stop you from sinning? Exodus 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. And said, Oh, make us! Uh-oh. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? And they heard God say, what did God say? Thou shalt have no other. <laughs> Let me hear God speak to me. God said, Thou shalt have no other. G O D S. Make us G O D S. Which shall go before us. Make unto us gods. Uh, thou shalt not make. After hearing God say, we are just into the fourth verse of chapter 20. We haven't even really started verse 4. All right, they got the G-O-D-S and make. Moses is right now with God as God is printing the originals. And wait till you see what happens to the originals. Which shall go before us, for as this Moses... The man that brought us up, uh, whoa, 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 the man that brought us up, let's see what God has said. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, we haven't gone four verses into the Ten Commandments and one verse in chapter 32, they're like, they blew the whole thing. And how late you months away from being across the river? Yeah, it was, yesterday was three months, I think it was. Let me see. Chapter 19, verse 1. Three months. It's still there, I believe. Because because what it does, it goes to the priest clothing, the tabernacle that God is speaking to Moses. Yes. Or coming out of Egypt itself. Moses is with God. He's writing the Ten Commandments. He's giving Moses all the law, all the clothing, all the measurements. And they're like, Moses is taking forever. And Moses, I believe, is 40 days and 40 nights. Maybe that's I'm not sure about that one because God sends them down. So here they are. God says, All right, Moses, come up. Moses is taking forever. And what God said to them in four verses, they haven't even got right. They violated the four verses. But they said, Every uh, let me quote, and all the people together said all that the Lord has spoken we will do you have now just lied and guess what you we haven't got to that one you have bared a false witness keep the law they did it and they can't so let's keep reading so they say Moses brought them out of Egypt verse 2 and Aaron said unto them Break off your golden earrings, which there, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons. Look at that, the sons are wearing the earrings. Up to date. Up to date. And your daughters, and bring them unto me. They were slaves. And yet they were wearing earrings. Egyptian earrings. And all the people break off the ear, golden earrings. I don't know what what the breaking off. I've I've seen women take off the you know the ones the clip-ons and the other ones that go through. I've never seen them break it off. I mean, they're leaving residue here. here here's a long dangly one. I don't know. We'll come to chapter thirty-two later, Lord willing, which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. It's an offering. They are making an offering to something yet. We're not into it yet. But they're making an offering. Before they make an offering to God the Father.
And he, Aaron, received them their hand and fashioned it. Means he made it, designed it. With a graving tool. Aaron's a people pleaser. And we won't get to the part, but I'll tell you what happened before we get to 32 on our own, Lord willing. He will tell he will tell Moses, I threw this stuff in the fire and poing, out, out, came out came this calf. No, 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 no. You fashioned it. All right. So thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. <laughs> thou shalt make. Aaron, you're going to make it. You're fashioning it. You're designing it. You're. And he made. Thou shalt not make made it a molten graven. Graven means you carve it. Molten means you put it into plates, usually clay or wood, and you pour liquid metal or cement or whatever you got, and you wait for it to dries and it's a mold. A molten calf. Remember the gods of Egypt we talked about? This is Apis, a form of a bull. And they said, here we go. These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. All right, let's read 20. We haven't got far, have we? I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image of any likeness as far as of, of, of a cow or cow. All right, the next part. They shall not bow down thyself to them. Ready? Ready? And Aaron saw it, and he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast unto the Lord. So there we got a holiday to the calf before God says his holy days. The Moo Moo God. And they rose up early on the morn and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings before the law even designs anything. And brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to have VBS play. Yep. 10 minutes eating, 15 minutes craft time, five minutes Bible, and then you get to earn little, little outside activities, bounce houses, slides, and, and teeter totters, and wherever you want. There it is. And it has nothing to do with God the Father. It violates what God told them to do. And I had people tell me if I can only hear God's voice. They heard it. And God spake all these words saying. Twelve chapters later they not, have not even listened to what God has said. People, you've got it in word writing, black and white, red, if it's, if it's Jesus' words in red. You've got it in writing, and you still will not do what God says. Even Christians, the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And you sit there and do nothing. I want God to speak to me. Here it is, the word of God, the Bible. And we'll get to that in chapter 32 in 12 more lessons, Lord willing. But, here's the problem. Here's the problem. There are bullets flying over your head. There's flamethrowers. There's airplanes dropping things. Oh, Lord God, you get me out of this foxhole. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Lord God, if you get me out of this thing, you get me away from this, Lord God, if you do whatever, whatever it is, Lord God, I'll do. All the Lord has spoken, we will do. And 12 chapters later, they, they've not done what God's told them to do. They've done everything against what God has told them to do. 
I'm a Bible-believing, born-again, saved Christian. I'm going to heaven. I cannot even get past the first commandment. This is why 1 John 1, 9 is written. And you'll get people... Listen, if you're not... In, and you get involved in any public ministry, you will come at to at least one person says, I keep the commandments. Now, I'll tell you how you deal with them. Number one, hand them a Bible and tell them to show them where they are. They're not going to be, and I have not found one they're able to find them. Because their commandments is on a wall somewhere. And as I said, number two, or verse four, is removed from Catholic editions and their Bibles. Check it out. So I shall not bow down before him. How about playing and having a good old time in an orgy? I mean, I, the Lord thy God, capital G, am a jealous God, visiting iniquity the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You know those people that dance around that, that, that calf did not get into the promised land. And their children. Let's, let's check out Joshua. It's near the last chapter of Joshua. Oh, where's this one? Verse 20, 24, 20. Now, how many years? Let's see, this one's 1427. We're 1491. That's what the dates of my Bible says. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange, there it is, then he will turn and do you hurt. <laughs> uh, Jerusalem was sacked by Babylon. There is no temple today in Jerusalem. And consume you after he has done you good. And the people say, Joshua, nay, but we will serve the Lord. See their big mouth again? All that the Lord has said we will do. They're opening their big mouth. Let his blood be upon us and our... Whoa. I don't even want to finish that statement. And Joshua said unto the people... Ye are witnesses against yourself. Good man, Joshua. You know, Joshua was riding along with Moses all this whole time. You know that, right? He's seen everything he's done to Moses. And that moment when God said, uh, Joshua, you're going to take over for Moses. I bet you Joshua went to a panic. Like, um, <laughs> time out. Wait, I didn't volunteer for this. Ye are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen you the Lord. To serve him. You have made a proclamation that you're going to serve God. And they said, here's their big mouths again, we are witnesses. They had just made it all. You say, where are you getting with this? Now therefore put away, said he, Joshua, the strange gods which are among you. That's a violation of uh, 20 verses 4 and 5. There are idolatry, there are images, there are whatever it is, aids to worship right there in Israel. And Joshua, as a proper man, says, get rid of that crap. Which are among you. They're right there with Joshua talk. We're going to serve God. And they got it around their necklaces. They got it tattooed on their body. They got it, you know, in their wallets. Everything I've seen people come up to me. And incline your heart with the heart man believes unto righteousness unto the Lord God, God, G, big G, O, D, Israel. Ready? And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve. His voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with... Where does it record that they got rid of those images? The Bible says that, that Jacob told his family, all right, get rid of these things, bury a hole, put it underneath that tree, we're not taken. And the Bible says that's exactly what happened. Joshua does not record that they did that. You know what the next book is after Joshua? It's called the book of Judges. And let's see, if I were to go to the end of Judges, let's look at the end of Judges. Chapter 21, verse 25. And in those days there was no king in Israel, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. If that's not America, I don't know what is. 
You got a, a man that, that cuts up his concubine in 12 pieces because she was raped. You got a man starting the, the Catholic Church out of money that he stole from his mother. You got a man that is used and glorified by God and he's messing around with women. You got a nation, oh, we love these gods, we love these gods, and God sends in an enemy. Oh, God help us, and he helps them. And they do good for a while, and then they fall back into sin over and over and over. So back to Exodus 20. You didn't know there was that much in Exodus 20, verses 1 through 5. So, they chose another god besides Jesus. You know Jesus is God, unless you're a Jehovah Witness. And they'll, they'll frankly tell you that Jesus is not God. He's Michael or Gabriel, somebody. Funny, J-E-G-A uh, or M-I. They're not the same spelling. Jesus cannot be any of them. It's not spelled the same. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. I'm one of them thousands that he showed mercy to. I left that crap. I grew out of that crap. Amen. I would sit in the pew of the Catholic Church in New London, Connecticut, and look every single time. There, there's there's Jesus carrying the cross. There's Jesus with me. With there's Jesus and, and there's Mary holding her heart. I don't know why she had her heart sticking out. I think she should go into a doctor. I go over to my aunt's house, and, and of all Catholics, me Catholics probably in hell today. She had Mary a mirror on her wall. And the beads. And the little wafer that had the crosses on it. And you dip your fingers in the water and, and tic-tac-toe yourself. I drink that water. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now that's not me. I don't keep his commandments. Alright. Moving on. Number three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. All right, that's not just saying Jesus Christ as a cuss. That's not saying. That's not only saying GD. I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God, and you don't do nothing. Lordy, Lordy, Jesus, Jesus is my friend. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's vain. Yeah. That's, vain means no value. You're just saying God's name for whatever. When you call yourself a Jehovah Witness and you ain't nothing but for Jehovah, that's vain. We're the church of Jesus Christ and you're far from it. That's vain. And you're guilty. How about calling yourself a Christian and you're not a Christian? That's vain. How about the media calling one group of church, a church a Christian and they killed Christians? That's vain. It doesn't have to be a cuss. See, people think just because of the cuss. It doesn't have to be a cuss. If I am a saved Christian and I mention the name of Jesus and I, and I don't do nothing with it, that's vain. When you're called to pray before your church service and it's just because you've been called to pray and your heart's not in it, that's vain. When you go out witnessing knocking on doors and doors because your girlfriend does it, because the pastor wants you to do it, because your mama wants you to do it, or you have alternative reasons but besides the love of God, that is vain. Next. Number four is not Christian, is not church age. This is to the Jews. Paul will never say, honor the Sabbath day. And I'm not one of those people what Paul says is signed and sealed and delivered. No. That's what the book of Acts says before Paul even was saved. They met on the first day of the week. Now, what number four would tell me is I need to rest my body. My body cannot go 24-7. God didn't go 24-7. And yet he still goes 24-7. So, six day. Right, remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. Now the congregation is Jewish people. There are some Egyptians, but they're not, not even. They're called a mixed multitude. That was only one place. 
Next time they're a mixed multitude, man, they're causing all kinds of trouble. Six days thou shalt labor. They actually use the old English spelling. And do all thy work. So you got six days to work. You got six days to do what you need to do. That's enough. That is enough. Do you know what one of the sins that caused Jerusalem to be sacked? Working seven days a week. And God said, you're going to be in Babylon as far as long as that ground of Israel is to get its yearly Sabbath. They didn't give it the rest on the seventh. The seventh day in the seventh year. Do you know what? I think it was both of them, Elijah or, and, or Nehemiah, pulled out beers and got angry and threatened to kill and torture people because they were outside the gates trying to sell goods at the flea market on the Sabbath. That's not America. That's not the church age. Going to church on Sunday is not the Sabbath, people. Saturday is the Sabbath. Some Christians don't even know that. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. America is not learning that. You need a rest. Yep. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Well, you know, Jews. In it, thou, Jews, thou, Jews, that's what we're talking to, a group of people called Jews, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the children of Jacob, shall not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, and thy maidservant, not thy cattle, nor the stranger, the, the Gentiles, that are within thy gates, in the land. These are a constitution of the nation of Israel, not America, not Europe. The constitution of the land is going to be called Israel, then Judah, then Israel north, is no one is to work on the Sabbath day. The entire nation shut down. So Jesus said, pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath, which tells you, Israel, it will go back to the law. They're not there now. Everything's going on on the Sabbath days in Jerusalem. You know, they proclaim. I don't think all of Israel is shut down on the Sabbath today. I could be wrong. They do shut it down? All the stores and all the uh, restaurants are shut down. 6 p.m. Friday is the start of the Jewish. It's family, workforce, animals, and non Jews. Uh, can I check on that? Yeah, would. We'll, we'll, that Jewish time is so messed up compared to our time. It's totally. Yeah. For the six, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Now, as far as this is what we get a revelation that, as far as writing, since Genesis one has not been recorded in writing. As recorded in the words of God, Genesis 1, the Sabbath, has not been recorded until Moses writes it down to the Jews. Now, were they taught about the seventh day Sabbath and all that? Verbally, I don't know. But writtenly, this is the first time. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, made it holy. That's where we get holy, holiday, holiday, holy day. We just add an 8 in there for the atheists to enjoy it. Alright, number 5. Honor thy father and thy mother. Well, how do you know that this is not for the church age? That thy days may be long upon the land. I'm not interested in the land. I'm interested in a city. New Jerusalem. There's only one group of people ever to be promised a land, and that's the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when you get to that land, you better honor your mother and father. 
or you're going to die early. And I'm going to tell you something, because, because if you go to Ephesians 6, 3, we'll see what Paul wrote to Christians. Ephesians 6, 3, and I'm not one of them people, what Paul says is, is, is stamped down in gold. But he is the author to the Gentiles. He is the author to the churches. And 6, 1, written to Christians. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. And I'm going to obey my parents. If I don't, they're going to spank me and take away my cell phone. No good. God, I love you. I love my parents. I'm going to obey them because of you, Lord. That's what the Lord wants. For this is right. <laughs> How do you like that? Okay. Honor thy father and mother. Okay, there's a commandment. Wow, that looks, look, it showed up. Which is the first commandment with promise. All right, here's the first commandment. No, it's not. Uh, I'm the Lord your God. You know, the God. That's the first command. But this is the first commandment of a promise. It is, what's he say? That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Paul, you changed the Bible. You Bible corrector. Because over here in Exodus says, land. Land. Paul says earth. Paul makes a little change in the scriptures because you know what? Christians are not interested in land. And while you're living and breathing on this earth, if you honor your mother and father, there is longevity. And this promise still goes to children today that there are children who have died early death because, you know what? They didn't honor their mother and father whether they read a Bible or not. There was a preacher I knew of about, he said, listen, I got to get things done I because I'm going to die early because I did not honor my parents when I was young. And he did not live on. 40s, I believe it was. But let's read what Exodus says to the Jews. Long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Okay, Christian, what land has God given you? And don't even mention America, please. I got put that clause. He hasn't given you a land. What group of people has God said, I'm going to give you a piece of land and gave it to them? Jews. What's Paul say? As long as you live on the earth as a Christian and you love the Lord and you do right? Okay. There's that promise still. Longevity. So how do you early kill your life? One of the things you can do is by not honoring and obeying your parents. All right, number six. Thou shalt not kill. And you see this one all the place. So what do you do when God tells a group of people to go into a land that are idolatrous and, and worshiping gods, and God says go in there and wipe them out, women, women, children, and even livestock. That David says you take them horses and hawk those horses because they're doing things with those horses that they ought not to be doing with horses. What do you do with that when God says go in there? Okay, now, at verse number 12, the fifth commandment, Father, uh, the next one, killing, adultery, steal, false witness, coveting. From honor thy father and mother down to the ten, they are in relationship to people, neighbors. One, two, three, and four are relationship to God. So, as an individual, you're not to kill. As a military ordered by your government, Jehovah Witnesses, you are obligated, as under the command of David, go in there and kill those Jebusites. I forgot what leader's name was now. I hate that. I hate old age. I got the name in my head. As soon as about the name to come out, it go boing. Joab. David orders Joab to go kill a bunch of people. Then David violated thou shalt not kill. Not as a military order. Because God, as a commander, ordered Joshua to go kill. What about Jericho? Hey, 
Thou shalt not kill. People, march around the city. And I'm going to destroy the city for you, except Rahab and her family. So there's got to be a cause. Personally, as an individual, I am not to kill. As an individual, I'm supposed to honor my mother and father. Number six, seven. Thou shalt not commit an adultery. It's plain and simple. That's defiling someone else. Your neighbors. Thou shalt not steal. Paul writes, if you've stolen, steal no more, get a job, earn. You will find these, and let's, I think it's Romans 13, 9, let's check that out. I don't know if this is the one I'm thinking about. Romans 13, 9, it may not be. All right, yeah, 13, 9. I wrote that in there. See, writing notes in your Bible does help. 13.9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Sound familiar? Thou shalt not kill. Sound familiar? Thou shalt not steal. Sound familiar? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Sound familiar? Thou shalt not covet. Sound familiar? We know Paul says thou shalt have no other God. We know that. We know Paul says thou shalt not make grivet images. He, he called them dumb idols. <laughs> He walks up to a to a God that has an unscripted the unknown God and starts preaching Jesus. We know about those things. But what is missing? There's no Sabbath. There's no Sabbath. So there you go, Romans 13, 9. So it's amazing to see a seventh day church of any particular whatever they are say we're gonna have a Bible study. Really? You must got a perverted Bible. Thou shalt not steal. All right, let's go back to thou shalt not kill. What did they do to Jesus Christ? All right. There you go. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. What did the religious order try to do against Jesus as he is in their mock monkey trial. They tried and hired false witnesses to go against them, but the false witnesses did not agree with each other. So thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's rumors. That's gossip. That's against another particular person, against mankind. In other words, thou shalt not lie. Naboth was lied about. Ordered by Jezebel. David committed, thou shalt not uh, commit adultery. And yet God had respect unto him. Number uh, 10. Again, this one's broken. And I forget where it's broken. I think it's neighbor's house, neighbor's wife. And then after that, and then thou shalt not his main servant, his man servant, and that. But somewhere in 10, the Catholic Church is divided into two. So they can get rid of the, the aids of worship. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Yes. Uh, Ahab. Commercials. And commercialism and advertising violates the tenth chapter, the, the tenth commandment, because it makes you want something you that's it, stop right there. Makes you want covet, it's the one. Wow, my neighbor's got a good house over the swimming pool and the garage. Oh, I wish I not you know, sin. Sin. Whosoever lusts upon a woman to the after oh man, I blew that. Matthew 5, 20. Whosoever lusted after a woman in his heart has committed adultery with her. Paul, again, changes the word covet with lust. Isn't that interesting? You have a desire of something that is not yours. That's coveting. You have sinned. 
I worked for a restaurant one time. They had the commercials on, and they come running out because I see it on the commercial. I want that, what I just saw. That's lust. Gambling is a lust. Oh, if I could just get all this money. So, neighbor's house, a neighbor's wife. Ooh, that shows in there twice. That's Matthew 5, 28. You don't have to necessarily sleep with her, Jesus said, Matthew 5, 28. You got, woohoo. By the way, you can do that with magazines and the internet, too. Nor his maid manservant. Wow, that guy's a hard worker. I wish I had him over here. Nor his maidservant, nor his ox. Wow, that guy's got a great John Deere tractor. Or his ass. Oh, look at that Ford pickup he's got. Nor anything that is thy neighbor's. In other words, keep your eyes off it. Now, if you can get through the first nine of the Ten Commandments, which you can't, you cannot get through ten. I'm sorry. There's something you want. You go walking through the grocery, all oh, that, that, all oh, that, that just looks so, you sin. And when you go to the grocery store, and I know this with an absolute shadow beyond a doubt, 49 years old. When you go to the grocery store and you're hungry, you are coveting because you come home with aisle number seven in your house. <laughs> you go in there for five things, you're hungry, and you've got an entire aisle in your house now. That's coveting. Whew, that's the Ten Commandments. How you doing? And all the people, Jesus fulfilled all those, by the way. And all the people saw the thunderings. I'd be like, ooh, wow. And the lightnings. Ooh, that's, I love them. And the noise of the trumpet is still going, still blowing, as God is talking to the people. And people come up to me, you're too loud. You're not going to like God. <laughs> If you don't like how loud I am, you are not going to like God's voice. And the mountain smoking. This is a non-volcanic volcanic mountain that's smoking. Come on, people. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood apart. Whoa! Well, it's not really the fear of God. Because look what they do 12 chapters later. They're afraid of the noise. And the yeah, they're they're not afraid of God. They're afraid of the movie, but not God. Even though they should be after they saw everything that God did to the Egyptians. But I didn't even fear them. And they said unto Moses, so Moses is there. He hasn't gone up yet. Now God's going to call him up and say, okay, let's get this all in writing. Speak thou for us, with us. For we hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. They are hearing God's voice. God's voice is so holy. God's voice is so might, majesty. God's voice is so powerful. Moses, will you speak to us? And Moses said to the people, fear not. For God has come to prove you. <laughs> That his fear may be before your face, that ye sin not. Moses, you contradicted yourself. You just told us not to fear. Then you told us that his fear may be before our faces. Wait a minute. What's the contradiction? The Bible says you ought to fear God. That's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of knowledge. That's the understanding. Fear of God will make you get right. Godly fear worketh repentance. We deal with people in America today. They will not get right. They mock the Bible. They accrue Jesus Christ because they have no fear. And you know what that rich man in hell had not? He had no fear of God either. He had the nerve to tell, to command. He had the nerve to order Abraham to have Lazarus come over and give him a dip of water. He had the nerve to go up to Abraham and say, you, you send somebody to my family. 
There is no fear in hell either. That's tragic. And the people stood afar off. And Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. You say, well, God is light. Yeah, but when you're dealing with a sinful people, who is that darkness according to 2 Corinthians 4.4? 4? It's Satan. The God of this world has blinded. That's darkness. And the Lord said to Moses, Thou, but thus thou, bleh, thus thou, ooh, that's a hard word, thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. The voice of God. Twelve chapters later. Now, do you know that God knows what's going to happen? Do you believe in the foreknowledge of God? Watch that. Watch what God does. He just gave him the Ten Commandments. Which, watch which ones he repeats, verily, verily. He shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall thou make unto you gods of gold. Moo. Isn't God great? Don't you hate when, when, when you're driving down the road and you get that red light and God says, Patience? Yeah. Oh, I wish I could seek myself into a, a hamburger right now. Patience! Oh, God. Is that how God is with your sins? He keeps reminding you? Whatever the anger, whatever it be, whatever it is, don't you hate when God rings that doorbell? Hi! <laughs> You're not supposed to be doing this. Hi! You're supposed to be doing this. Don't you just hate when God does that? But He loves you. Long suffering. By the way, when we do get, what did I say, 32? You're going to see the anger of God on these people like you have not ever seen yet. When they do commit that sin of idolatry. Wait till we get to that one. So far, God's been pretty cool and long suffering. Well, here, here's some water, here's some manna. And the altar, okay, now, another thing. We're going to break to another subject. After he warned him about idolatry again, he threw the idolatry in there twice. We went through ten commandments and we did one twice. For knowledge of God, my friend. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. So if you're going to make an altar, and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offering. Oh, what were they doing over there with that calf? Who made an altar? Aaron. What were they doing? Peace offerings, burn up. Verily, verily. He saves, God saves his last because he knows what they're going to do. And peace offerings, chapter 32. Thy sheep and thy oxen. In all places where I record my name. That's Jerusalem. But all places where I record my name. You know what you're going to start doing through Exodus and Joshua? You're going to start recording where God is placed. Where he's been. God is a great record keeper. Wait till we get the numbers. Wait till we get back to First Chronicles. I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee, if thou will make me an altar of stone. You say, hey, that stone over there, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. No cutting, no dynamite, do not change that stone. Excuse me, pardon me. When it comes to that altar, if it's a stone, nothing man made. Now, do you hear what I said? When it comes to the rock, nothing man made. You better come to the rock that is God made, Jesus Christ, for salvation. Don't you dare change Jesus. Don't you chisel the rock that's Jesus Christ. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, Thou hast polluted it. 
Well, let me fashion this thing so. Oh, did I use the word fashion? I'm sorry, Moses. I mean, Aaron. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to use that word. Neither shall thou go up by the steps of my altar. You're not to have an altar with steps. So, if altars in churches are correct, and I don't believe they are, most of the altars I have are steps. That thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. I mean, there's nothing more going upstairs and looking up skirts as a little boy I was. God says, no, don't do that. But whatever God tells us to do, we don't do. And when God tells us to do something, we don't do it. Trouble. <laughs> 